Now let's look at a two-bit gray code up-down counter. So this is going to be a counter that still produces a, an output of 00011110, except that we're going to have an input signal which will tell whether we're going to traverse it like this and count up, or we're going to traverse it backwards and count down. Okay? So it needs to have an input into the uh, system. So let's take a look at the, uh, the block diagram. That was kind of the word description right there. So now we want to come along and we want to look at the block diagram of this. So we will, what we're going to do is we'll have an input which we call up. So we'll, the output will still be called gray. We'll have a clock and we'll have an up. And so if up is asserted, we will count up in a gray code manner. And then when it's a zero, we will count the other way. Okay? So pretty straightforward. And now we're going to create our state diagram. And what that looks like is this. And again, it's a pretty straightforward one. We're going to choose a we're going to choose to have four states, one representing each output. So we'll call them GC0 for gray code 0, GC1, GC2, GC3. We will say each state is going to produce the output. It's going to produce the counter value. So we'll go ahead and say inside of that, each state, we'll say gray is 0, 0 here, gray is 0, 1 here, gray is 1, 1 here, gray is 1, 0 there. And all we need to do now is transition through the states accordingly. So when up is a 1, we will transition clockwise. When it is a 0, we will transition counterclockwise. And that is the functionality we're after. If I put that into a state transition table, pretty straightforward. A little bit more uh, complicated because we have an input, which is called up. So that means for every current state, we need to list out when, what to do when up is a 0 and when up is a 1. So we do this. So when, up is a, when I'm in GC0 right here, and I get up is a 0, I'm going to count backwards. I go to GC3. When I get a 1, I'm going to go to GC1. Notice that my output, gray, is 00011110, corresponding to the current states. It doesn't matter what the input up is. Okay, so let's start synthesizing it. First thing we want to synthesize is the state memory. So let's start doing the state encoding. Well, we are going to use state encoded outputs, so we want to choose output codes which match the outputs that we want. We want state codes that match the outputs. So I'm going to choose GC0 to have a state code of 00, zero because that's what my output is for that state. And I want GC1 to be a 0, 01, which is the output for that state. GC2 is 11, one, one, GC3 is 10. So those are my state codes. Now I choose my state variable names. I'm going to call them Q1 cur and Q0 cur for current state. I needed one variable name for each bit within the, the state code. And then I needed I need uh, names for the next state variables, which are going to be Q1 next and Q0 next. And then all I do is I fill in the code. So GC0 was 00 here, GC1 was 01 there. And I went ahead and completed the table, filling in all the rows. <clears throat> and then I listed over here for gray, I listed the output for each one. Even though you can see that when you're in GC0, gray is simply the same value for each. And that's just to make the table look more complete. <laughs> okay, how many D flip flops do we need? We need two. We need one for each bit within the state code. So that is my uh, state memory synthesis. Now we come along and say, well, let's do next state logic synthesis. The question is, where's my next state logic? It's right here. This bit, Q1 next, and this bit right here, each of these need a combinational logic circuit in order to produce the next state variables, the next state codes. What are the inputs? Well, the inputs are going to be the current state and the input up. So these right here, these three bits are the inputs. So it's a three-bit combination logic circuit for Q1 next, three-bit combination logic circuit for Q0 next. Now, remember, this table, though, look at the, the values. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. So that's nice. It's a nice binary count. And then I go to 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Notice this is not in a binary count fashion. So the reason that's important is because we need to make sure that when we synthesize the logic, we're going to put this into a K-map, we need to just make sure that for the codes, the appropriate input codes, we list the right output code in the right location. Okay? So let's do it. Let's look at what the, uh, the K-map would look like. So I come along and I go for my, I go look at the K-maps for Q1 next, 
and I, the, they're dependent on Q1 cur, Q0 cur, and up. I put them in the K-map using the appropriate locations in the K-map corresponding to the input codes, and it turns out I was able to minimize a little bit, so I was able to have two prime implicates, and I came up with the sum of products logic expression. And then over here, I synthesized for Q0 next. I put them in the K-map, and I was able to, again, minimize a little bit of logic there, so I was able to come up with a minimized logic expression. Now I go to the output logic synthesis, and it's state encoded outputs. That means the outputs are simply the current state. That was by design. That's, that was the, the trick that I used. Or the, the, I took advantage of the fact that I could encode the states with the desired output value so that my output logic was nothing more than wires. Okay, what does the final logic diagram look like? My state memory is going to be 2D flip-flops. Okay, not just 2D flip-flops, they had to be assigned to a particular state variable bit. So this one was Q1 cur and Q1 next. This one was Q0 cur and this was Q0 next. So that's how I assign them. And then for each of those, I simply pop down my next state logic for Q1 next, my next state logic for Q0 next, and look at my output logic. Wires directly to the current state. That's because it's a state encoded output. That was a decision I made in order to make the counter have smaller output logic. And then finally, if you look at the way this operates, simply when up is a 1, it counts in a gray code fashion. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Then when it goes down to a zero on up, I count backwards. So zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, zero. So it's a backwards gray code counter. So that's a two-bit gray code up-down counter.